us uh, begin our uh, today's session. So it is uh, going to be on your unit 13 methods and under which we are going to discuss about your high throughput sequencing. As such the sequencing it is serving as a high yielding topic especially for your CZR net as well as many interviews, right? Because this is uh, going to be really a high yielding topic for your preparation. So uh, keep uh, listening with this particular subtopic. Yes, and in many interviews also, this is being very frequently asked. It is a high-end technique, right? So before understanding about this high throughput sequencing, we will just have uh, through uh, know what we are doing at an academy. Yes, at an academy, we try to reach out, you know, the mass of students through your online education. So this is a real time, you know, revolution where you can attend the classes from home, right? So all the classes will be live and why it is so special, you know, uh, uh, it is being taken up by your top educators. We are all well qualified and well verified. And we do have a series of uh, weekly quizzes and doubt clearing session that is really going to bloom up your preparation. So you don't forget to use my code BIOVC16-522 that is going to get you with a 10% discount on the total fees. And these are the list of courses that are currently running, especially with your December 19 batch. And very shortly, your December, your June 20 batch will be beginning off. And so kindly enroll if at all you are going to write net at June 20 as well as December 20. So if you join up for one year course, it will be highly benefit to you because it definitely takes times for you to learn and assimilate things. Yes, Rome cannot be built in a day, right? Okay, so net, it is an easy exam. Let's crack it. Okay, so these are the list of units that are taken by me. It is including your molecular interaction, cell biology, fundamental process, developmental biology and methods. Okay, so please do follow me and definitely you can crack your examination, right? Fine. So in today's class, we are going to see about your DNA sequencing, you know. So we will uh, have a look at uh, your Maximan Gilbert, Sanger's method, automated and pyro sequencing, and then ion torrent sequencing, and then we'll be dealing up, uh, you know, with your next generation sequencing. So all those things will be covered today. So cheer up for the today's class. All right. So the first thing we are going to see today is about your Maximan Gilbert sequencing. So why we have to sequence a particular gene? Yes, so what is the need for sequencing? Why we should actually sequence a particular gene? Right, if at all you are so much interested to isolate a particular gene, you should know the sequence. Right, so if it is going to be your lab scale experiment, maybe you will do it with the PCR using primers and finish it. Right, but you want to isolate the total gene. So you will be sequencing the particular uh, gene, isn't it? Right, and uh, no, using PCR, you could have amplified the fragment, but after your fragment is amplified, you want the gene sequence, right? You are interested to study about the inheritance. Definitely, then also you will go up for the sequencing. Suppose there is a forensic investigation, no, this paternal fight, and all those things, uh, there's a victim and you uh, know in the in particular crime case, they get a DNA sample. They come to you for help. Huh? Definitely by using your RFLP based technique, this VNTR are very specific. So you can make a sequencing for uh, confirming that this is very same sequence, right? Okay. And then identification of biomarker. Even that serves as a very important uh, no, function. For example, no, you have a set of genes in your hand or maybe a genome sequence. You want to find how much persons are going to be victimized by a particular disease. So you have already identified a set of biomarkers. Then you can do the genetic screening. That is what it is going to happen very shortly in another 10 or 10 years. Okay, right. So all those things definitely require sequencing. Okay, so that is why this is so much uh, buzzword, right? Okay, so now we are in the third and the fourth generation, but the very first generation of sequencing was uh, done by using your plus and minus sequencing strategy. So they used almost 5386 base pairs of the far genome and then they made a sequence. Followed by that, they used your maximum Gilbert sequencing, followed by your chain termination or your dioxy method of sequencing to find the sequence of a particular genome. Right. So all these uh, data, no, it, it will help in the exam. How come? Because uh, as you take any kind of examination, you will be asked up with key three points. What are they? What it will be coming in the exam? Number one, it is going to be the basic principle behind that particular experiment. 
Number two, it is uh, going to be this specific methodology that is being used. Number three, it is the interpretation of the result. Okay, since because your method unit is so critical, you have to focus on these three. Any method you take, only these three will be asked. Principle, method and interpretation. So let it be our this sequencing also. What is the principle behind each of the sequencing method? You can prepare a tabular column on your own such that it will be helpful for your revision. Okay, so coming to your Maxim and Gilbert method, I told you this is a chemical method of sequencing. Okay, here what do you do? You modify your DNA by means of treating them with a chemical. So that is why it is called as the chemical modification of DNA. Okay, and it will be cleaved at a specific basis, right? So that is why it is called as the chemical modifications of DNA and cleavage at the specific basis. So how you are going to modify them? You are going to cut them with the specific chemicals. Okay, so if at all you are going to use your dimethyl sulfate, right? So what your dimethyl sulfate will do? Your dimethyl sulfate is going to cut only the G residue. What is G? Guanine, right? But if at all you mix your dimethyl sulfate with formic acid, then what will happen? You mix your DMS with formic acid, it can cut either at G or at A. Okay, so that is what it is going to happen off. So if you treat them with your dimethyl sulfate, it is going to cut either at G or at A. Okay, so that is what it is happening in case of your uh, no, modification of bases using your dimethyl sulfate. Alright, but remember this will cut only the bases. Okay, the sugar phosphate backbone, it is intact now. So you have to cut the sugar phosphate backbone. So which chemical you are using? You are using this piperidin. So this piperidin is going to cut your sugar phosphate backbone. Okay, so this is the very much basics behind uh, this uh, sequencing thing. Okay, so now what you are doing up with? You want to find out uh, this uh, base modification. That is what you are doing with your Maxim and Gilbert. So what you do? You are going to add your dimethyl sulfate. If you add dimethyl sulfate, if at all in a sequence there is a presence of uh, no. That is literally the presence of your guanine residue. It will make a cut. Okay, so if you add this dimethyl sulfide along with your formic acid, then it might cut at either guanine residue or it might cut at your G or A. Now one doubt will come to you. So like, uh, uh, like where exactly the cut will be made? For example, if I take a sequence like this, yes, this G will be acted on or this G will be acted on or this G will be acted on. See, it can make a very, very random cut. Okay, so it may cut at any of the region. It is not so specific only that first position. It is not so specific at third position. It may cut at any of these position. So that is the significance of this enzyme. Okay, so your base, it can be modified at any of the position. The position is highly random. Okay, so that is the significance of that particular thing. So it is making a very random cut. It can be cut anywhere, right? Okay, so that is the first point I want to tell you. The next one, what they are doing, they are labeling your 5 prime end. This is your maximum Gilbert method. Remember that. Okay, so in maximum Gilbert, what they are doing, they are labeling your 5 prime end. With what? With P32. Okay. So this is uh, gamma P32. Right. So they are labeling your 5 prime N with your gamma P32 label. And it is done by using your polynucleotide kinase enzyme. So this polynucleotide kinase, it is going to incorporate a label exactly at the 5 prime N. Right. Now what they are going to do? They are going to make a cut with uh, this uh, uh, this uh, sample. So wherever the, the base is there, then it will be cut. Okay. So now let us think, assume that it is being treated with your DMS. Okay. So the moment you add this DMS, it will be making a cut at G. So one sample may be here, one may be here, one may be here, right? One may be here. So you are getting a different range of samples. So if you separate them, especially on your gel, what will happen? It will separate as per the size, isn't it? Okay, so which will come first? Which will come first, the 5 prime end or 3 prime, uh, this big portion? 
If you take your gel, in case of your normal gel, the longer fragments will be stuck at the top, isn't it? The smaller one, it will actually go below, right? The longer one, it will be stuck at the top. So this longest piece, it will be at the top and the smallest one at the bottom. Ultimately speaking of, your 5 prime end will be at the bottom and 3 prime end will be at the top. So this is how you make up a thing. Isn't it? So the lowest one, it will be uh, no, containing your 5 prime base. It is very, very short. This highest one, it is going to contain the very longest uh, thing. Yes, everybody, I hope you got it right. So this is how you know, your modified bases are going to be helpful you know, to get used in these things. Right. So the next one, it is uh, using your uh, hydrazine. So what this hydrazine will do? If you add the hydrazine, it may cut either at C residue or at T, you no know, C or T, right. But if you use the hydrazine along with NaCl, it will make a cut only at C, right. So this is how these bases are going to get modified with help of all these chemicals. Right. So this is what it is your glycosidic bond. Okay. So if you use your base uh, modification agent like your hydrazine or your DMS, it will cut only this. But the sugar phosphate bond will be uh, intact. Okay. So only the bases will be displaced. Later, this will be cut by helpfulness of your piperidine. Right. So if you have a sequence like this, okay, so if you put the particular chemical, what will happen? It will degrade and it will form different, different uh, sizes. Okay. So for this, what you have to do, you have to take your gene sample or your DNA sample and separate it into four aliquots. We are not going to take a single strand, isn't it? We are going to take a concentration. For example, you are having you know, 100 microliters. You just split into 25 microliters of 4 vials. Okay, so that is how uh, you will be doing it up with. So you separate them, the sample into 4 aliquots. And once you separate them into aliquot, each of the aliquot, you add the respective chemical. So you might add DMS, you might add formic acid, you might have hydrazine, you will add hydrazine along with your saline. Right. So when you do that, it will be specifically cleaving and you will get different band. Then you can run them in a gel and you will get this integrated image. So this is what it could have been asked in your examination. So they will give you a gel like this and they could have asked to write down the sequence. So always remember, you have to write the sequence from bottom to top. Always it should be from the bottom to top because it is in your 5 prime towards your 3 prime direction. Right? So that is the important thing you have to match it up. Okay. So now can we read this particular sequence? I told you already that you have taken 4 aliquots. So each of the aliquot, uh, no, it will be run in the particular gel. Okay, so if you run them, uh, probably if you add only DMS, it could have cut only at your G residue. If you could have add your DMS plus hydrogen, uh, plus formic acid, you take the second thing. Here you could have got either it could cut at G or at A, isn't it? So you can see the difference in the band, right? So your DMS will cut only G. Your uh, DMS along with your formic acid will cut at G also at A also. But see here if it is going to be A, the second residue, you will see a band only in this region. In this region there is no band. Why in this region there is no band? Yeah, why in this region there is no band? Because this is not containing G. Isn't it? It is containing A. That is why you can write the sequence. This is an unknown sequence. Okay. So shall we try it off? So the first sequence is going to be G. Base is going to be G. That is why, you know, it is showing band in both the columns. Right. So second band, it is present in G bar A and it is absent in G. So definitely that should be A. You got it, I guess? Right. So second base should be A. What is the third base? The third base is present in your C bar T as well as C. That means it should be the C base. Look at the fourth one. Fourth one is present at T and C. But it is absent in the C. So it is not C. So obviously it should be? T. 
yes everybody i go i hope that you got this point right so like that you can write the sequence for your maxim and uh, gilbert sequencing so this is a very important technique which was used earlier for a um, uh, thing so if we sum up the major important point as of your maxim and gilbert sequencing is considered number one here we are using chemical cleavage so remember the four chemicals what are they so it is going to be your dms along with your formic acid and then hydrazine and nacl right so it will cut only this glycosidic bond and this piperidin is only cutting your phosphodiester bond this will cut only this glycosidic bond remember that and then you take your total gene divide it into four aliquots like for example you have 100 microliter of sample you can put them into four aliquots the very same sample and then you treat them with the chemicals you make a division now you run them in the gel and if you run them in the gel you get separated as per the size right so always you have to read in the gel from bottom to the top why from the bottom to the top because it migrates as per the length okay so if if it is at near your five prime end see here this g is being cut everything is random huh so if it is cut very near then it is very very small if it is small it can migrate through the gel till the end but if the fragment is very big it cannot migrate through the gel so it will be stuck at the top so always you have to read the sequence from the bottom to the top this is the total thing of your um maxim and gilbert sequencing now we will have a quick look at the sanger sequencing such that we can move back into our ngs right so what is your sanger sequencing this sanger sequencing uh, this is uh, no this is sometimes called as your dideoxy sequencing method okay so here what do you do instead of your normal pcr only one modification you make that is you will be adding up your ddntps okay instead of your normal dntps that you use for pcr you are going to use your ddntps okay so uh, apart from that it is like a routine pcr in pcr what are the components you require you will be requiring a template you will be requiring a primer you will be requiring your polymerase so all other things remains the same but or uh, no buffers even they remain the same but only difference is apart from adding your deoxy nucleotide triphosphate you will be adding your di deoxy nucleotide triphosphate so if i am not adding this di deoxy it is very similar to pcr okay so what is the difference between your di deoxy nucleotide triphosphate and deoxy nucleotide triphosphate so one more oxy deoxy isn't it so what do you mean by deoxy deoxy it is the removal of oh right so that is the deoxy so already the difference between your rna and dna is that in case of rna you will be having this oh group isn't it that oh group is being lost that is why you call them as the deoxy ribose now one more oh is removed which oh your 3 prime oh is being removed if your 3 prime oh is removed how will your chain elongate because you know that for the formation of your phosphodiester bond you need this oh group isn't it so this oh is going to react with your 5 prime phosphate and that is going to form your phosphodiester bond but now you have removed this oh if this oh is removed then the reaction cannot be extended so it is going to get terminated that is why this is sometimes called as your chain termination sequencing okay right so these are all no they make up your uh, di deoxy sequencing things okay so uh, what you need is as i said you definitely need the primers for your uh, sangers method you need the dna template for your sangers method and even this was asked in a previous year question what are the components that is required for your uh, sanger sequencing okay so all these things are really important for your examination don't skip out so as i said concentrate on four main things on any technique the principle the method the interpretation as well as you know certain uh, interpretation analysis examples okay these four things are only every time asked from any technique so you can put a tabular column by itself save the information definitely you can crack right okay so coming back here this dna template for a sequencing it can be obtained you uh, know from your recombinant m13 bacteriophage so that will be containing your dna of interest okay so this is the template synthesis so once your template is ready you can anneal the primer right 
and then you can extend them by using your DNTPs. Okay, so I have a hypothetical question for you. See, there is a single stranded DNA. You have annealed the primer. Now, by mistake, you forgot to add the DNTPs. Okay, so only DDNTP is there. So now, what will happen to the chain length of this particular sequence? Yes, so you have forgotten to add your DNTP. You have added only the DDNTP. So will this DDNTP incorporated here or not? Already primer is there. Huh? DDNTP, only one base will be incorporated. Why? Because this DDNTP will contain the 5 prime phosphate. Okay, so this is containing this 3 prime OH and this 3 prime OH and this 5 prime phosphate can act. But after that it cannot extend. So what will happen? Your chain will be extended by a single nucleotide. So your primer plus one length will be added. Right, yes, I hope you got the question. Right, so all these things are uh, no, critically interesting as well. Right, so this is how you have to carry over your reaction. And here also, you know, if at all you are doing your radioactive labeling, then you will be adding four separate aliquots. But now this is being replaced by fluoropore. In case of the fluoropore, you do not require separate aliquot. In a single tube, everything is being done. Right, so that is the advancement now. And remember, in case of your radioactive labeling, you'll be using your polynucleotide kinase for your uh, 5 prime thing, right? Okay, and here you'll be adding your DDNTP that is being labeled. Okay, so as I told your DDNTP incorporation is highly random. They do not follow any specific manner. They are highly random, of course, right? Okay, and then, you know, if, if you add your enzyme, your DNA polymerase, it will be extending your primer till your DDNTP is encountered. If your DDNTP comes, then it is getting a stop. Okay, right. And uh, you should maintain a proper ratio between your DNTP and DDNTP. So see, if you put some 100 of your DNTP, only one DDNTP you should add. Or else what will happen? If you add more amount of DDNTP, your reaction will never grow. Yes? So all those things you have to have a look. So earlier I told, you know, the primers you could have used with your radioactive label. But now it is being, you know, modified. Like uh, what they have done is that with your DDNTP, they are linked to contain the fluorescence. So, you are not having that much a trouble in reading, right? So, here in case of your normal sequencing gel, so like we saw for their Maxim and Gilbert, it should be read from this bottom to the top, right? So, what is the bottom? It is 5 prime end. What is the top? That is going to be your 3 prime end, right? So, you should move from your 5 prime end to the 3 prime end. That is from the bottom to the top top okay so you now you can very easily read the sequence yes everybody come on let's read it is going to be g and then what is this t isn't it and after that it is going to be a and then c and then t and then a a a t g g yes everybody you got it so this is how you will be reading a sequence from the bottom to the top so it is a very simple method isn't it? Right, right. So all those things are really helpful for your preparation. And now this is getting automated. So here you need not have separate aliquot and all. Single aliquot, you know, you just add everything. But only thing, your DDNTP will be added with the color. Okay. So red color, you uh, know, all those things, it will be just added off such that, you know, you can identify easily uh, the nucleotides. Right, so this is how uh, this functioning is taking place. Okay, and yes, definitely now we will uh, move towards your uh, uh, next generation sequencing. Before which we will just have a look at what we are doing at our Anacademy. Right. So at an academy, uh, we are striving hard to make the students to crack your net examination as of our CSER net life science wing is considered. Okay. So uh, we are giving a very good practice. So this is a little bit flexible. Why? Because these are all online courses and the courses are live and structured. But yet, uh, no, you can take your own uh, convenient timings. And even if you miss a class also, don't worry, you can see up the recorded version. So another advantage, you can revise as many times as possible. 
right and as i said the lessons are being conducted by top educators personally i have already completed my phd in biomaterials so you can uh, know that you uh, know we have already uh, been through all these process and uh, we have been already ready up with everything what is needed for your exams right and we do have uh, this weekly quizzes and doubt clearance so that will help you to you uh, know crack your examination and this is my referral code biovsa16-522 you can use that you can apply that code such that you will get a 10% off on the course fee okay these five units are being dealt by me definitely it takes time to study yes so rome cannot be built in a day definitely you need a long time to prepare with the courses because are all in depth courses right so we follow very standard uh, no books and um, reference material for that all that uh, notes it is easily downloadable in pdf format so that will make your uh, revision preparation everything to be easier and uh, no these are the units that are dealt by me molecular interaction cell biology your fundamental process developmental biology and methods right ah, okay so now we will make a move uh, move towards your next generation sequencing and that is a uh, no that is really serving as a buzzword these days right ah, okay so what is this next generation sequencing already we have uh, we have seen a lot of sequencing methods isn't it but in this case of your next generation sequencing it is little bit different what is the difference here here we are going to deal with three major steps okay so the first step it is going to be on your library preparation okay so if you take your sangers method i told you that you require a template yes and then you require a primer okay suppose you don't have any idea of what sequence is your thing then how you will prepare your template how you will have a primer for that it is literally not feasible isn't it so that is why this next generation sequencing has become a bus why it is not requiring any particular uh, no known recognition sequence nothing is required you don't need any primer simply you can get the information on the sequence then how you will find it see they are using an important method that is called as the library preparation okay so what they literally do in their library preparation for instance you have a new organism okay so that sequence information you don't have any idea but you have the sequence with you what you can do is that you can first digest your sample okay you simply fragment your sample right and then you have a set of adapters what is this adapter adapter will have your uh, no sticky end okay and that sequence is already known to you now you will do a ligation of your fragment your unknown gene is there you have cut it so you are going to take this particular piece and you are going to ligate it with your adapter now i told you already you know your adapter sequence right so by this you can very easily you know track it yes tracking this unknown by this known fellow so that is what you are doing in this experiment okay so this is what it is called as the library preparation so how you are preparing your library you take your sequence you cut them into tidbits once you cut them into tidbits you ligate them with this adapter this adapter sequence you already know it so that is the first step library preparation second step it is the clonal amplification so how you are going to amplify your fragment that is bounded with an adapter you can use two major methods one method it is called as your emulsion pcr method okay and the second method is called as your bridge pcr method not a major difference between them emulsion is like an oil or the water mix okay that is what it is called as the emulsion bridge it will be conducted in a chip okay but what you will have inside your oil droplet huh you will be containing a sequence that is complementary to your adapter okay you already know your adapter sequence am i right so adapter sequence is already uh, already known now you put a sequence which is attached to your emulsion bead that will contain the sequence complementary to this adapter now even though you do not know this gene sequence this is already been tagged with your adapter 
Now you have a sequence complementary to this adapter. So this adapter bounded region will be binding here. Now if you start a PCR reaction, this unknown region will be amplified. I will repeat it. Don't worry. See, the first step it is your library preparation. The second step it is uh, no, going to be your adapter, this thing. See, what you are going to do, you are taking your genomic DNA, you are digesting them maybe with the enzymes or you are doing the sonication such that you generate your double standard DNA fragment. Now, to this DNA fragment, you are ligating this adapter. This adapter, it will have a sticky end, isn't it? So, your DNA fragment, it could have bound with your adapter now. So, this is what it is done during your library preparation. You know the sequence of your adapter. You are not having any idea on this genome sequence. But still, since because you know about this adapter, what you can do is that within your emulsion bead, you can make a sequence being attached that is complementary to your adapter. Okay. So now your adapter is complementary and that is going to come and bind with. Okay. So once it is going to come and bind with, see this is how the bead is looking. Okay, so this is making an emulsion and this bead will be containing the complementary sequence of this adapter. Now if you put this, right, so see here, now you are putting your adapter containing region that could have bound within your emulsion. Okay, so that is how it is getting amplified. So now like PCR, you are repeating it like almost 30 times. So that becomes multifold in volume. Okay, so this is how all these reactions are taking place within your emulsion PCR. Okay, so that is a critical important step that is made out you know, to amplify your uh, sequence, especially by using this uh, method of your next generation sequencing. And the second uh, method of your clonal amplification, it is being done by means of your bridge PCR. Okay, so bridge PCR here, what is the method? So I told you here in case of emulsion PCR, you are going to use your oil droplet. So instead, here you are going to use your chip, chip technique. Okay, so that is what it is the major difference between your emulsion as well as your uh, bridge PCR. In case of your uh, bridge PCR, you are making them to ligate with two adapters. In emulsion, how many adapters you use? In emulsion, you use only, uh, no, in emulsion, you use only uh, one adapter, isn't it? But here you are going to use with two adapters. So these uh, two adapters, it will be you know, bounded at uh, the two ends. So that is how it is generating in case of your uh, no, a bridge PCR. So after this two adapters are getting ready, uh, then you will uh, make them to uh, sit into the flow cell. Okay, so once they are going to sit into the flow cell, it will be getting attached within the flow cell and you know, that is how it is, it is you know, binding up and it is uh, getting uh, ready. Okay, so this complementary sequence that will be there in this corresponding one, so you know, it will make a bridge between these two. Okay, and then that will get amplified. So that is how your bridge PCR exactly works. So you have your DNA fragments. And you have primers, so they are attached, okay. And then the ends, it will be attached by the complementary primers. So they form a bridge and that will be amplified. So that is how your bridge PCR works. Right? Okay. So now this is all about, you uh, know, the different uh, uh, methods of uh, what it has been uh, done uh, with your uh, uh, library preparation and amplification. The third step, it should be your sequencing. All right. So the sequencing, it can be done uh, by uh, many methods. So one, it is going to be your 454 sequencing method and that is nothing but your pyro sequencing. The next, it is your solid platform. It is called as the sequencing by ligation. And the third one, it is the sequencing by synthesis. So that is by means of your Solexar technology. Okay, so all these three methods are really helpful to make a complete uh, no, uh, thing on your sequencing. So your 454 pyro sequencing method, your sequencing by ligation by means of your solid platform and then your sequencing by synthesis by Solexa technology. Together they really make uh, the total uh, thing of your next generation 
sequencing okay so we will uh, see in detail about each and every type of method right so the first thing is going to be your pyro sequencing method in case of pyro sequencing method you probably use the light as an indicator okay so here you can see that you know you will be adding your um, a strand with your primers and then once the synthesis begins if the correct nucleotide is getting incorporated it will form your phosphodiester bond and it will release this ppi so this ppi it will react along with your aps and sulfurylase and it will lead to the formation of atp so once this atp is formed it can react with the luciferin to form the light okay if a wrong base is there then a pyrase it will act and delete it okay so this is how if uh, the correct nucleotide is being added you can detect the light so based upon the intensity of the light you can detect whether it is going to be your a nucleotide t nucleotide g nucleotide or c nucleotide right so this is how your pyro sequencing really works and this is one of the most important method of sequencing right so coming to the next method so that method is being called as your sequencing by ligation okay so the sequencing by ligation we will be using your dna enzyme called as dna ligase instead of your polymerase so that is the major difference so usually for uh, all kind of sequencing we use only dna polymerase isn't it so instead of your dna polymerase we are going to use your dna ligase so this is the major difference instead of polymerase you use the ligase all right so this ligation it will be performed in your 5 3 prime to 5 prime direction okay so uh, this is uh, it is opposite of your polymerase reaction your polymerase it is being carried over uh, no in case of your 5 uh, prime to 3 prime direction but this is being carried over in 3 prime to 5 prime direction okay so that is uh, the very important thing that you have to note it down and uh, no already you have your known sequence but that will be anchored or ligated with the flanked sequence uh, so this is called as the anchoring sequence okay so that is known nothing like your adapter ha huh? so that is called as the anchoring sequence and then you know it will be partially degenerate and it will bind off with so then you will be adding the different probes now you use your ligases and then you are adding up so once it is being added the fluorescent dye it will be cleaved off okay so this fluorescent dye it is cleaved off so it will be sent out once it is sent out it will be detected okay so that is how it is all leading to okay so your phosphothiourate uh, linkage between the bases 5 and 6 it will allow your fluorescent dye to be cleaved okay and so this is how i uh, know it is uh, taking place and it will lead to the synthesis right so what you will do you will do an adapter flanking and then you will make a design uh, with uh, the thing and then you will move off with another round that is your abi solid method and already we have seen about your pyro sequencing as well as your uh, illumina so all those things are literally very interesting methods that is really helping out you uh, know you to uh, form uh, this uh, thing right and uh, and uh, no all these techniques are uh, critically Uh, examination so you have to have an eye on all these methods and we will uh, see a bit on your ion torrent sequencing even that is uh, no very important uh, for your uh, examination so in ion torrent uh, sequencing what literally takes place in case of your ion torrent sequencing you will be having a bead okay and then uh, your uh, dna template uh, will be present right and uh, if uh, it will be attached with the primer now if you add your nucleotide what will happen it is going to release uh, release your h plus ions so your protons it will be released when your dntps it is incorporated into a growing strand so once this proton is released it is going to change the ph okay so once this ph is being changed it is going to change the surface potential and then if the surface potential is changed that is going to change the voltage okay so this is how the total change is going to take place so a bead is there right so you have your template and uh, if this uh, protons uh, if the, your chain is extended protons will be released if the proton is released uh, no then what will happen it is going to change your ph 
If your pH is changed, then it is going to change your volt uh, charge. If the charge is changed, then obviously it is going to make a change in your uh, no voltage. So this voltage deflection it will tell you that which is the incorporated one. Okay, so that is really very uh, important. By deflection you can find out uh, literally what is taking place inside. Right. So all those things are literally very important method. So uh, together as such, the sequencing, it is a very interesting technique that will really uh, make you to uh, learn a lot for your examination. And uh, really that will be helpful in your preparation as well. Yes. So you, uh, you can stay tuned for us, our courses at an academy where we really aim hard to make you to crack up your examination. So personally, I'm taking up the courses with five major uh, preview. So it is on your methods. So this method unit will be covering up, you know, all the techniques in detail. And you know, we are, we will be loading you with a lot and lot of practice sessions. So that practice session will really make you uh, to get enabled to solve many, many questions. Because the major difference in approach of studying your methods with other units is that in methods you have to first understand the concept and you have to apply your knowledge to interpret it. Okay, so here at an academy we will be giving you a list of practice questions by that definitely you will be grilled to make to solve those questions. Yes, so that can come only by practice. So practice is definitely going to make uh, you, you uh, know, perfect and you have to practice through the correct methodology also, right? So this is all about our courses and you uh, know, if at all you are preparing for this current exam also, you can enroll for the revision course. If you are a beginner, definitely you can enroll for the 12 month package and don't forget to use my code BIOVC16-522 such that you can uh, get a 10% off on the total value. Okay, so we will do a quick revision of what we have been done today. So we began with your maximum Gilbert sequencing. In your maximum Gilbert sequencing, we first added uh, know, your fibrin end with your polynucleotide kinase. So that will be adding up a radioactive label at your fibrin end. So this will be done by using your gamma P32. Okay, right. So now your fibrin end is labeled. Now you are going to add the chemical. So that chemical is going to do up the modification. So what are the chemicals you are using? Number one, you are going to use your dimethyl sulfate. So that is the DMS. So this dimethyl sulfate is going to make a cut exactly at the guanine residue. If you add uh, formic acid to this DMS, it may cut either at G or at A. Okay, so that is what it is happening. So it may cut either at G or at A. And the next one, it will be this cleavage of your sugar phosphate backbone using your piperidine. Right, so that is all being done. The next one, it is the base modification using your hydrazine. Okay, so here you are going to use your C bar T. Okay, if you use the hydrazine along with your sodium chloride, then you are going to make a cut at C. Okay, so this cleavage of your sugar phosphate backbone, it can be done by using this piperidine. Right, right. And this is how you are making a cut at your glycosidic bond. So only this base will be released. But your sugar phosphate backbone is not cut by this base modification. So generally you use this piperidine such that you cut your phosphodiester bond. So generally you take them and you divide them into a four aliquots. So these four aliquots you add specific chemicals. So DMS if you want to cut at G. DMS plus formic acid if you want to make a cut either at G or E. Hydrazine if you make a cut at C or T. Hydrazine plus saline if you want to make a cut at only C. Yes, and then you have to remember always you should be reading the gel from the bottom to the top. Right? Fine. Next coming to your Sanger's uh, no, dideoxy sequencing method. In case of your Sanger's method, what do you do? You will be using your single standard DNA template. And definitely you have a methodology to prepare for your template. Isn't it? So the most common method is using your M13 bacteriophage. So your M13 bacteriophage by using your rolling circle model, you can use that and your double standard DNA it will be denatured. And this non-denatured double standard DNA, it will be leading to the formation of your single strand. And that is what it is called as the cycle sequencing. And then you will be adding up the primers for your DNA sequencing. And how you will get your primer? 
you can synthesize them isn't it you can purchase or you can synthesize them and they should be somewhere like 15 to 30 nucleotides in length so this primers will be attached to your dna template and then you can anneal uh, the primer and you can extend them so your extension it can be done with your uh, dna polymerase in the presence of all your four uh, dntps so it will have a very less amount of ddnt Okay, it should be in the ratio 100 is to 1. If you add more DDNTP, your reaction will uh, never like proceed only. Okay, so your uh, DNTPs, uh, what is the difference between your DNTPs and DDNTPs? I told that, uh, no, your uh, DNTPs, it will contain, uh, it will contain actually, uh, no, your uh, 2 prime uh, OH and uh, sorry, it will contain your 3 prime OH. But your DDNTPs, this 3 prime OH is also absent. So that is why your phosphodiester bond cannot be formed. So the reaction actually stalls. Okay. All right. And if you take off, uh, no, in case of your Sanger sequencing, you will be adding uh, into the four aliquots, you will be adding your DDN, ATP, CTP, GTP, and TTP. Okay. So if your ATP, DD ATP is added, wherever A is there, it will be randomly blocking it. Isn't it? So that it's also happening, happening in a random manner. There is a random addition, no specific addition. It is occurring by means of the free permutation and combination. Okay. So this is how it is actually taking place. Okay. So now then they will be forming the sequential of ladder and you can visualize them by using your uh, gamma 32 thing. All right. So this is the actual output. So uh, no, you should read here also. You should be reading from the bottom towards the top and uh, no doubt in this. Right. So this is the total thing I wanted to tell you regarding your automated sequencing. And now this is being updated by means of your fluorescence method. So in fluorescence method, what do you do? You don't need any more radioactivity thing. So you take your DDNTP, you add a fluorescent tag to them. For example, if you take your DDTTP, put red color in it, DDATP, purple color in it, DDGTP, green and DDCTP, blue. Now, this is chemically modified your DDNTP. So, you need not require any four thing, huh? only single uh, well is enough. With a single well only you can add all those things, it will be running up and uh, based upon the excitation by laser, the fluoropore will give different intensity. So you can very easily read out the bases. So this is what it is being used even in your NGS. Okay. So they use this uh, method of recalling one thing. And now instead of your slab gel, they are using your capillary tube such that it can be very easy for you to uh, use it up. And this pyro sequencing is your sequencing by synthesis. So here you will be fragmenting your uh, DNA fragments, you will be attaching them with this adapter, you will denature them and you will fix them to the solid surface. So what are the solid surface? It can be your sepharase, it can be your streptavidin, right? So all those things will be helpful uh, no, to make up uh, this stuff. And your uh, beads, it will be complementary to this adapter sequence and all those things will take place and it will show you up uh, the thing. Right. And uh, the next uh, important thing we saw, it is the ion torrent sequencing. In case of the ion torrent sequencing, if your chain is growing, your DNTP is being incorporated, it will liberate your protons. So this liberation of proton, it is going to modify your pH. So pH is changing. Once your pH is changing, the charge is changing. Once the charge is changing, your metal oxide sensing plate will direct the change and it will deflect the voltage. So the voltage you can record and by that means you can definitely know what is the sequence of that uh, particular template. Yes, so all these are the different methods. So that will be helpful to do. Likewise, we do have your shotgun sequencing. Here, what do you do? You, you chop your DNA into fragments. You clone them inside your bag and then you make an universal uh, primer and then you, you make a walkthrough. Certain gaps in the overlap and context you can find out, you can read them, but there may be a little bit of gap that you have to finish and read it. And you have two approaches for your gene gun sequencing method. One, it is a shotgun approach. Other, it is your whole genomic approach. So your shotgun sequencing clones, you will be getting them. You will be cutting and assembling them. So that is your shotgun. 
right and then we saw about the next generation sequencing under the next generation sequencing method we had a detailed uh, thing on your preparation of your library how you will prepare a library you take your whole genome sequence cut it into tidbits and then to that end you just add your adapter this adapter already the sequence it is known for you uh, so you can um, take it up and then you know you will be subjecting them to the clonal amplification so two major methods are used one it is going to be your emulsion pcr other one it is going to be your bridge pcr in case of your emulsion pcr you carry over them in the emulsion bead so this emulsion bead oil and water you know that is the emulsion bead inside that you will be having a complementary sequence now you add your adapter attached dna into that it will be complementary it will be binding so once the binding is done you perform this clonal amplification so even though you do not know the sequence of your dna fragment since because it is complementarily binding with your primer primer is nothing but the sequence complementary to adapter you can pull out the whole sequence of your unknown dna so that is what it is taking place with your emulsion pcr right so uh, that is what it is being done with emulsion pcr and the same thing is being repeated for your bridge pcr in case of the bridge pcr what you do instead of single adapter you ligate them with a two adapter so one of the adapter will be binding to one of the region of the flow cell and other adapter is complementary na so that will binding with this other end of the bridge so it will form a bridge like amplicon okay now it will be attaching and it will be forming a clonal amplification as a bridges okay so this is another mode of amplification that is called as your bridge pcr so both of them are very commonly used in case of your next generation sequencing for amplification and then as i said you can use your pyro sequencing method so that will use your uh, no liberation of the light as an indication and then you can use your uh, abi solid method uh, uh, for uh, the sequencing by ligation or else you can use your illumina that is the most common method sequencing by synthesis okay so all those things are really uh, very important uh, for your examination so definitely you know this uh, this all will help up in your preparation and you really keep rocking in your preparation and i will catch you up in another interesting class till that it is signing off saranya bye bye all the very best